Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from Impact Church. But so, what's this thing called purpose? This is, uh, this is from the John Templeton Foundation. So some smart people got together, and they decided that purpose is a stable and generalized intention to accomplish something that is at once personally meaningful and at the same time leads to productive engagement with some aspect of the world beyond yourself. Now, that's a, that's a mouthful. My breakdown is purpose is clear. It's defined. It's a goal that you set that's connected to who you are. It's something that you want. It's something that you desire. It's, it, it's, it's something that comes out of you. And it's something that engages the world around you, the people around you. Purpose is, is, is part of who you are, and it's knit into the very person that God made you to be. So God has a purpose. Like I said, the Apostle Paul, he, he, uh, he, he expounds upon it for us. Galatians 3, verse 10 to 11, it says, God's purpose, this is it, ready? God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amazing, eh? God's purpose was to manifest himself to reveal his wisdom and his glory throughout the whole of his creation, in heaven and earth, everything that's known and everything that's yet to be known by us. And he wanted to do this through the church, through us. In other words, this God who is so unknowable, unapproachable, undiscoverable, who's impossible to grasp, too large to understand, too big to get, He's so completely different from us. He's so other than us. He's so immensely big. He's radiant. He can't be approached by finite beings like ourselves. He can't be grasped. We can't get him unless he condescends and lowers himself and becomes knowable and becomes known. The Apostle Paul put it this way, 1 Timothy 6, 16. He said, it is he alone. God alone has immortality. God is the only eternal person. God alone has existed forever. Everything and anything else, even heaven, even the throne that he sits on was created. Even heaven was created. Everything except for God. There was a time when there was just God. Nothing else, just God. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. That's the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. He's describing something mysterious about God. He's saying that this God, this immensely relational God who wants to be known, he's so big, he's so holy, he's so full of life and light that unless you're of equal substance to him, you can't even get close to him. It's like the sun. You can't get close to the sun, right? You can't, see, you can't do that. It's too big, too altogether different. So God condescends. He comes down and he makes himself known. He makes himself knowable. And Paul grasped this in a way that, that no one else had. And he understood that God had chosen the church to be the vehicle through which this unknown and unknowable God would become known and knowable. And he says that he was going to do this according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus. Accomplished past tense. The eternal purpose of God for the unknown God to become known, the unknowable to be made known, has been accomplished and, and achieved in the person of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, the unknowable God became known. In him, the fullness of the Godhead came to dwell bodily. Now we can touch him. Now we can see him. Now we can feel him. Now we can rub up against him and you can know him. This great, big, mighty God. How great is our God, yet he is, he's, he's come down to our level to be with us, to be seen, touched, and felt by us. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And now it's through the church. Paul said that the church is this, this organism. In Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23, the church is that vehicle through which the fullness of God dwells, and he's going to fill everything. He's going to fill the whole world with the knowledge of who he is through us. I hope you can see that. I hope you can feel that. I hope you can feel the, the dignity that you have, the amazing uh, calling that you have as a human being to be a, a container, a vessel, a revealer of who God is to the world and forever. 
It's absolutely amazing. See, Ephesians 1, 9 and 10, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things together in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. And as the church, that group of people through whom he fills all in all, I hope you can see that you too have eternal purpose. See, it's through us that everything will come to know God. Jesus is the eternal gospel. He's the eternal message, the eternal gospel, the word, the communication of God to his creation that we will forever be preaching, proclaiming, living, manifesting, and revealing. Paul had, Paul had some insight into this. He said, you know what? One day you guys are going to judge angels. Do you know why? Angels long to look into the things that we know. They want to see. They want to figure it out because you know what? You have a relationship with God that they don't have. You're a child. You've got the, the DNA of Almighty God inside of you. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, they see him externally, but he lives inside of you. You know something about God that no one else does. You can reveal him in a way that no other creature can. I'm telling you right now, no other creature here or in heaven. Sorry if that's a little bit weird. But as, as the body of Christ on this plane, on that one, in this age, in the ages to come, will forever be revealing the person of Jesus Christ. That is our purpose. That is what we've been called to. It's amazing. And if you grasp this, if you get this, if you let this get down into the very core of who you are, and you let this purpose start to permeate everything you do, you're never going to live another dull, boring, insignificant day in your life. Every day is full of purpose because you are uniquely designed to reveal something of God that no one else can. You are uniquely created and designed to reveal Jesus Christ in a way that only can happen through you. Christ shining through you shines through you in a way that he can't through anybody else. You were made that way. You connect with this purpose. And this is what the apostles and the prophets of old, this is what they did. They took lives of ordinary people and they connected them to the great big thought of God from before he created anything. He connected their lives to infinite purpose and meaning by saying, this is the eternal thought, the eternal purpose of God. See, there's lots of things, lots of causes that we can give ourselves to. There's lots of things that we can get involved with. But you know what? The apostolic and the prophetic ministry, they, they connect you to this purpose. They don't let you settle for something less. They don't let you settle for seeing that you're anything less than purposely, intentionally designed to reveal and carry the very glory of God himself. Now, when you connect with this purpose, Paul said in Colossians 1, this is one thing he prayed for the Colossians. He said, I pray that you're going to be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may live lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Connect to purpose, connect to eternal purpose, and you will bear fruit in every good work. And you will grow in the knowledge of God. And when I say grow in the knowledge of God, I think he's thinking about, like, take your kid to work day. <laughs> you know, where you're, you bring your kid to work. I've never done it, but, you know, I've seen parents do it, and, and kids come away with a whole new appreciation of who mom and dad is. R. Whatever. <laughs> Jesus wants me to learn grammar. Now, this thing, purpose, it's not only good spiritually, but from a secular perspective, people who don't even know Jesus, they've come to understand that, that the need for purpose is one of the defining characteristics of a human being. Humans crave purpose. We can suffer serious psychological conditions, difficulties when we don't have it. You were made to live on purpose. Just look in the Garden of Eden. He made them, and then he said, now go do this. God has a plan. God has a purpose. To be created in his image is to live on purpose. To be recreated in his likeness and image in Christ Jesus is to again embrace a life of purpose and meaning. It's a fundamental component of a fulfilling life, and it's a vital component of manifesting the life and purpose of Jesus. I've heard it said one time that if you plan anything, it's not the Holy Spirit. We're called to be Christ-like. God had a plan from the very beginning, and he makes all things work together according to the counsel of his will. So here's the thing. Here's five observations about purpose. Like I said, I don't want to tell you what it is. I, mean, I think I can tell you what God's purpose is, but I don't want to tell you exactly how that fits for you, but just think about these things. Just meditate on these things. Let, let them shape and inform your thinking about your own purpose, and I pray that the Spirit of God will guide you into all purpose. He'll guide you into all truth, and he'll guide you into the reality of why you're actually here. 
Because those books where you, 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 know, you can do the six steps to find out what you're here for, those are a dime a dozen, really. What we need is Holy Spirit unpacking us to us. So number one, there's five observations about purpose. We're going to look at how it starts with being, it's in love, it's relational, it's multifaceted, it's demonstrative, and it's visible. So number one, it starts with being. Now what I mean by that is this. Remember how I said that purpose, for it to be purpose and not just random activity, it has to flow out of who you are. You have to be personally connected to what you're doing. Otherwise, you're not really engaging in purpose. You know, there's an author, her name's totally escaping me right now, but she wrote a book called The Path, and she said, you know what, everybody's living purpose. You're either living somebody else's or you're living yours. Pretty interesting. But anyways, starts with being. Comes out of who you are. Ephesians 1 verse 3. It says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul starts off this book about purpose, and he says, Father. He identifies God as Father, just like Jesus did. He came and he showed up, and he said, hey, this uh, Elohim, Yahweh, let's call him Father now. He's our Father. So God, out of his Father's heart, he wanted a family. So it goes on to tell us in Ephesians 1 that he predestined us to adoption through Jesus Christ to himself. So our doing comes out of our being.